So Valentine's Day has been and gone and it got me thinking about how incredibly lonely I am. So I thought what better way to find love than playing a dating sim game. And I ended up streaming a small dating sim called Speed Dating for Ghosts and it got just a tad bit weird. I'm a ghost. Ooh. <laughs> Step back. Dot, dot, dot. The girl's eyes narrow. Narrow your eyes. Oh. Oh. What are you into? <laughs> Want to make some money? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does she know she's dead? Does she not know she's a ghost? I killed him. Gary, no. So the plan is simple. If I can't find a real date before the end of the game, then the video ends. Wish me luck. Oh, hello there. You must be here for speed dating. My name's Fran. I run this little operation. Nice to meet you, Fran. Also, oh, what's the deal? So what's the deal on nice to... I, I want to be polite. You're a nice one. Thank you. We get all kind of ghosts here. Nice ones, sad ones, a few spooky customers. <laughs> okay. It gets lonely being a ghost. Oh, Fran, are you okay? It has been pretty difficult. I like being alone. Oh, see, that's tempting. That's sensing. But if I want to sympathize with her, hmm. See, I don't mind being alone, but if I want to simp if I want to sympathize, it has question mark. Wonderful. And then let's get started. We've got three rooms set up, each with their own super fun themes. You pick one and sit at our table. Then what? Another ghost who also signed up sits across from you. You'll have a few minutes to get to know them. Then a bell will ring and you switch seats. A bell rings from somewhere. Is that the bell? Just like that. In all, you'll meet three ghosts over two rounds at the and at the end, you'll get to choose your favorite, okay? If they liked you too, <laughs> you go on a date. How's all that sound? I can't wait, neither can I. First things first, though. What's what's the first thing? What's it? What is it? Choose your room. We got the room of palms, the room of liars, and the room of black. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna go room of black first. Get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. The room of black isn't really a room at all. It's more a gar uh, garden courtyard. The sun beats down as you squint to see what's going uh growling rows upon rows of yellow and brown plants drying and rotting in the sun what fruit these plants produced shriveled on the vine but there's a piece to this place the crickets are chirping and well beyond the garden a train passes you sit at a table opposite an empty chair we get to meet the first the first uh competitor for my date the bell rings and a ghost appears Oh, he's cool. He's cool. <laughs> I'm a ghost. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, they use LOL in uh, the afterlife. Okay. Wait. L O L. <laughs> I like this guy already. He's so funny. Isn't it great being dead? Uh, I mean, I'd rather be alive. You'd rather be alive? Actually? That's so sad. Oh my god, what the hell? This isn't a date. Being dead is the best way to live. I'm dre. I'm like dead serious. Uh, oh, I'm dead. I'm like dead, obviously. <laughs> what am I playing? I'm playing speed dating for ghosts. I'm dating ghosts. You know, dating shouldn't just be part of uh, life. It should also, uh, dating should also be in the afterlife, you know? You get to date whoever you want in the afterlife. I'm also, like, dead. <laughs> Go figure. This just isn't going anywhere. Let's be dead together. What do you do for fun? How did you die? Um, what did you do? What do you do for fun? I haunt places? Like, actually scare people? Nothing too mean. Just like, flick a lights off and on. Move stuff around so it floats. Push people down the stairs, okay. <laughs> you know, ghost stuff. Fun. Wait, you push people down the stairs? LOL. I don't actually. I was just pulling your leg. Oh, whatever it, it is. You've got... Excuse me. 
Let's go to Buddy Go. <laughs> oh, the name is Dre. Oh, Dre. Dre looks around. Man, look at this place. Only ghosts would think a rotting garden is a good place to pick up. And yet you're here. Well, yeah, I'm here. Ever tried dating ghosts in the wild? They all just contort and wail. And not in the good way. What are you into? Boobies. <laughs> Dre snorts a little. No, but seriously. I've got out with all kinds. Pretty girls in dresses who carry their own heads. A shadow who refused to let me look directly at him. Being dead is great. It's the other dead people that kill me. <laughs> I'm still not used to any of this. When I was alive. I love jokes about dying. Life sucked. Jerks everywhere. Never enough money. The jerks got the money. <laughs> I'd be all, the best way to die is now. Before death does me in. You found a right gym. <laughs> it should be at it should be at least buy me dinner. Jokes, you know. But now that I am dead, it just feels right. Like maybe it was meant to be, which I guess makes sense since we all die in junk. Oh, thank god that's over. Oh, thank god that's over. And the ghost rang that bell thing. <laughs> That means we trade, uh, change places. See you in a bit. <laughs> I am not picking you, my, my friend. <laughs> Another ghost appears. Oh! Oh, hello there. I'm Hattie. Oh, should I do like a... Should I do like the Evelyn voice from Stardew? You'll have to forgive me. I'm a little shy. It's just so nice to get out of the home. To see a new face. <laughs> um, I think you're a little old for me. The home? The haunt, the old folks home. Oh, I haunt the old folks home where I died. Queen Mary's. It's not a nice place to live. Let alone die. Um... Few nursing homes are. The nurses do their best. Just because Evelyn's old, trying to imply she's dead. <laughs> but they are short staffed. The residents are frequently neglected. To make Queen Mary's a little better. That is my mission in death. How do you help? Any way I can. I keep watch over on vitals. R um, ring a nurse when needed. Tuck residents in at night. Oh, she's so sweet. She's so sweet. In their final moments, I whisper in their ears. There is more, I say. Pine tree stream, <laughs> Lord dating the ghost of Stardy Valley, Evelyn. Just you wait. That's so nice. I never thought death would be like this. As ghosts, we have power over the living. Whether they know it or not. We ought to use that power for good. I agree. Now that you're dead, what do you do with your time? I'm still figuring that out. It's strange being dead. There's a Bible verse I think about sometimes. It is better for you to... Enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the worms that eat them do not die. George punching the air right now while he rolls around the living room. <laughs> and the fire is not quenched. I still have both my eyes. What I see is unlike hell. Hell is other people. I've heard that. I don't believe it. 
I can't imagine I can't imagine anything worse than being alone. Oh, she's so sweet. She's so sweet. Were you alone when you were alive? No, I had a partner. Milton. He's still alive, actually. A resident at the home. Oh, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. She was so sweet. She was so sweet. Oh, I guess that's our time. I suppose I will see you again when I come back around. Thank you for the talk. She's so sweet. <laughs> Another ghost appears. Oh! Oh! Hmm. Dot, dot, dot. The ghost says nothing, only stares. Dot, dot, dot. Step back. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. The ghost's eyes narrow. Narrow your eyes. Dot, dot, dot. Oh! Oh! The sides begin to crack and tear. Inside smells so foul, musty and sour, like rotting peaches. The girls let out a, gut a guttural cry. Low and lonely. The other ghosts in the room are all looking at you. Um. Stand your ground. Dot, dot, dot. You are not like the others. I could say the same about you. I am a vengeful spirit. <laughs> not unique among ghosts. Just perhaps among these ghosts. You're still welcome here. Vengeance is never welcome. <laughs> why did I go? Why did I turn into Batman? <laughs> so far, we've discovered you're into more other women. No, no. She was just really sweet. I wasn't going to be like nasty towards her. The only other option was like to be a bit more like, I guess, nasty to her. <laughs> why did you make him Batman? Because <laughs> he said vengeance. But still, it exists. I exist, Batman. <laughs> A lost soul, not unlike yourself. You could try. You could call me Gary. That is who I was. Who I used to be. Tell me about Gary. Gary was a simple man. An accountant. Common. Gary liked the patter of rain. <laughs> He's so funny. Oh, so we've gone from emo kid to old lady to vengeful soul of Gary. Baseball games and decaffeinated tea. What happened to Gary? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ask. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Sorry reserves for those who are not. I still feel like I still feel the blade, the life draining out, emptied, an empty space. Where once there was something, now cobwebs, a draft. Who? I'm so sorry. No, he said sorry is for those that are not sorry. So who killed you? I do not remember. Can you help me remember? Well, your time's up, Gary. I apologize in advance. Your time with Gary ends before you have a chance to answer. Perhaps if you get to know Gary a little better, you can help him. Help him remember how he died. It's one way to spend an evening. The second round begins. Ah, oh, not you again. Everybody's so flipping gloomy here. I keep, I keep thinking, who died? <laughs> Technically, everyone died. We can fix him. We can fix Batman. <laughs> That's the joke, man. You know, that's a joke, right? Man, we should just go hunting. Freak out some flesh bags. Give him something to be afraid of. Mmm, maybe. Like you're gonna do better than me here? Mmm, I, I have already done better. I, Gary is better than you. <laughs> oh, anywhere? Most girls are sad as heck. Or boring. Lots of boring ones, too. I would take Gary over this twin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what makes a ghost cool? Did you really ask that? If you're cool, you're cool. You just are who you are. 
You're not trying to wear someone else's bed sheet, you know? <laughs> I've only I've only met a few ghosts like that so far. Mostly ones I may uh, I meet. Uh oh, god damn it, I can't read. Mostly ones I meet at punk shows. It's great because you never need a ticket. Um, so why are you here? I want to meet ghosts who aren't like me. I'm sick of doing the same things. But then I actually remember I like doing those things. I really just want to share them with someone new. I know I probably sound prophetic. Yeah, you do. Would his character be better, better with Elliot's voice? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to give it. I don't want to give it. Elliot's cool in Stardy though. This guy's not cool. <laughs> Already, this was okay. Come find me after. We'll do something. Mm, no. Uh, what exactly did you have in mind? You'll see. Can can I not choose you? Can I maybe not choose you? Ah, oh, hello. Hello again. How is the speed dating going? Is it everything you hoped it would be? Um, there are some weirdos here. Weirdos? That's not very nice now, is it? I'm sorry, but it is. There is. Even the living are a little weird. The dead, well, just look at me. I look like cotton balls. I suppose you're right. You're darn right, I'm right. <laughs> I've been around the bend. Lived longer than most of those. these other ghosts have been dead. I know a thing or two. Even still. Dying has shown me there's still a lot to learn. Always something new worth knowing. Hattie looks at the garden rotting around you. Do you like gardening? Not really. You and whoever tends this garden. She chuckles to herself. As far as interests go, I'm afraid I'm pretty boring. Beyond growing things and helping people die. There's not much more to me. I suppose I like true crime. <laughs> she is a she's a serial killer. <laughs> Patty's straight up a serial killer. And making jam. Making jam out of their blood. Is jam something that interests you? Uh... Wait, you like true crime? Oh heavens, yes. Like a lot of folks from my era. I started with Capote. <laughs> Capote. <laughs> but he was a little too literary for me. I like the gory details. David Simon and Edna Butchernan? <laughs> Especially. <laughs> Who do you like to read? None of these, if I'm being honest. But if I had to say, I guess I'll go with Edna. A fan of the lesser known, I see. Which is your favorite book by Edna? In Cold Blood. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought everyone knew that. I was just testing you. <laughs> Either you're lying or making fun of me. I don't like to be made the fool. I don't like it one bit. I'm sorry. I accept your apology. These speed dates can be a little intense. I'd like to get to know you better, though. Somewhere with a little le less pressure. Okay, I feel like I've just annoyed Hattie in round two, so... The bell rings. Oops, there's the bell. I'm due at the nursing home tomorrow. I'd be honored if you join me. It's not as exciting as a date as other ghosts might offer. But it has its rewards. Someone dear to me is taking a turn for the worse. I'm afraid he only has a few days left. I want to make sure he knows they won't be his last. Let me think about it. I understand. I'll be at the Queen Mary's at 7am. Hope to see you there. Oh, I'm really, I'm really torn between Hattie and um, Batman, Gary. Because on one hand, I want to find out, I want to help Gary. But on the other hand, Hattie seems really sweet. And I want to go and help the old folks. 
uh, move on with her. No, Hattie is taking you on a date to see her dying husband. Oh, no. Also, it's not a date, is it? We're going to go and see die her, her dying husband. That's that's not a date. That's, some, that's going to see someone die. It seems like she wishes she could just stay and talk to you. That's so sad. <laughs> Gary! How did you die? Hello again to you too. Hello. How did you die? Um... Peacefully? No. Death is peaceful. I died... What, what do I say, chat? What, what will make Batman feel better? What will make Batman feel better? I died alone. Oh, that's so sad, though. That's so sad. I mean, I guess everyone dies alone. I died alone. As do we all. We're not alone anymore. That is true. I have not smiled in a long time. <gasps> he smiled. He smiled. We're, we're fixing him. It hurts. I am actually going to stop now. <laughs> I only recall silvers of my last, oh, slivers of my last moments alive. Emotions work. A shadow along the wall. I know these memories are important. I do not know how they fit together. Tell me about work. Tell me about the shadow. Uh, tell me about emotions. There was anger, frustration, guilt. Now, all I long for is revenge. It pumps through my blood. But how can I need revenge when I don't know what happened? When I don't know who it's to blame? Uh, vengeance won't solve anything. You mentioned a shadow? The shadow was long, dark, but familiar. It crept along the wall. It crept through the office as we worked at night. It came for me. It has a name. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, why can't I remember its name? Gary's eyes looked so threatening when you first met him. Now they look sort of sad. Maybe we should go to your old office? I haven't been back as much as there's something drawing me to that place. There's more pushing me away. I, I'll be by your side. Sentimental. And yet, knowing I will not do this alone, it helps. I still feel the blade, the life draining. <laughs> Join me after the final bell. Together we will discover why. I'm gonna lose my voice tomorrow doing these voices. I need to do easier voices next time. Gary left a strange transit map behind. Routes you've never seen. A certain stop is circled. <sighs> so I'm guessing now we choose who we go with. I think it I think it makes sense to choose Gary, right? We we really want to know what happened to Gary, don't we? But it makes sense choosing Gary. You arrive at the bus stop where Gary asked you to meet. The last bus went by hours ago. Still, there are other ghosts waiting for something. One one natters to herself like a squirrel. Another is on the ground, arms around his knees, rocking back and forth. The third ghost is has his back turned, staring silently into the darkness. It's Gary. Oh, he's wearing a little bow tie. He's wearing a little bow tie. I wore the bow tie. <laughs> you look nice. I wish to look respectable. One must look respectable when meeting one's end. Even for the second time. Also, I thought you would like it. I love it. Gary smiles. <laughs> Briefly. <laughs> we are going to the place where I died. The office where I worked as an accountant. Under the tracks. Where the trains grind and the halts shake. The dead of night of a crooked drive. Sounds spooky. Yes, spooky. A dim purple light washes over Gary's face. Gary, you're purple! The dead of night. Bus has arrived. This bus is not sanctioned by any city. Its driver is a wisp, a fragment of a broken spirit, 
Train to perform repetitive tasks. You and the other ghosts get on the bus. There is no fair. You've all paid the price. <laughs> Gary is the man behind the slaughter. What slaughter? The office whose trust as I remember it. I sat in that corner. Accounting is not thrilling work, but it can be exceptionally busy. The papers on Gary's old desk are carefully stacked. It seems he likes to keep things orderly. My partner's desk. Always a mess. Papers and rotting food cover every inch of his other desk, of this other desk. Service. Beg your pardon? Service was my partner. Service Galek. Gauk. Funny name. What was he like? I worked with the man for 16 years. At first, for a bank. We were miserable. So we struck out on our own. Gary sits at Service's desk. He turns on the desk lamp to get a better look at the papers. He was a friend. He was a thief. The green and gold lamp collecting dust on Service's desk casts a long shadow. The shadow begins to move. It creeps along the wall until it hangs squarely over Gary. He was telling our clients they owed money. Money they did not owe. He would pocket it for himself. Small amounts so I would not notice. But even small numbers do, add, do not add up. Wait, but even small numbers do not add up. Is it not small numbers do add up? Gary struggles to stand. He seems troubled by something. When I confronted him, there was a fight. In this room? Yes. I killed him. <gasps> Gary, no! <laughs> oh, God. I still feel the blade. The knife in my hand. I looked for gloves. Bleach. I found them, but I could not hide what I had done. Instead, I called the police. Sitting quietly in the dark, I waited for them to arrive. When the officers knocked on the door, I was so sad. He was the man behind the slaughter. They warned me, but I couldn't let go of the weapon. Frozen in place, right there in our office. They shot me where I stood. I died here, same as service. At least you know. I am hunted by an act of vengeance. Not the need for it. I am sorry for bringing you here. I am sorry I am not good. Don't be sorry. You are right. Sorry is, res is reserved for those who are not. I must carry this burden. Atone for my act. I take comfort knowing service is out there somewhere. Perhaps seeking his own vengeance. I suppose it is only right that I give it to him. Gary is gone. The office is darker now. On the wall you see a portrait. Two smiling men. Service and Gary. The day they opened their firm. The office begins to shake as the first train of the day rolls by overhead. But the picture stays fixed onto the wall. I can't believe Gary did it. I can't believe Gary did it. Hello again. It's nice to see you. I'll just put your name down and you can go right in. Okay, so that was room of, the room of black. I guess now we do the room of palms or liars. I'm going to go with palms, I think. I need, I need to, after that sad story, I need to, yeah. The room of palms. It looks like the basement of an old church. Faded floors. I don't know. Spare walls with the odd religious print framed in peach colored wood. On one side is a large kitchen. Old refrigerators donated by the con congre congregation. Hum and drip. This, but, uh, this must be where the cabbage smell is coming from. Rows of long tables are set up for the next spaghetti supper. They work well enough for today's speed dating. First date is...
The bell rings and the ghost appears. <laughs> Sup. <laughs> ghost spaghetti sounds banging. I'm Riley. You're pretty hot for a ghost. What does what does that mean? What does that mean? Slow down there, buddy. Sorry. Just saying. Isn't it cool we get that we oh uh, <laughs> isn't it cool we stay the age we died? Makes dying young a little better. How did you die? Oh wow, so long story. I was a wide receiver in high school. Got real good. When it came time for college, BAM! Full scholarship. But football's rough. When you catch passes like I did, you take a lot of blows. Huh. <laughs> After a while, I started getting headaches. I'd get dizzy just standing up. But I kept on playing. Had to. I mean, these were my best years until one day. I am not even going to try and pronounce that, but I get what you're saying. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, now I'm here. <laughs> that's sad you had potential. That is so mean to say. And we get to meet. So it's not all bad. <laughs> I try not to let... Oh, I try not to let how I died define me. So many ghosts have sad stories. I want to make the... I want to make the best of this. Have some fun. You know what? I will say he's an optimist. Be the best rally I can be. It's just hard to figure out what that means. I wish Ghost didn't care so much about labels. What do you mean, lad? You had you have a rugby ball in your head. <laughs> it's just like when we were alive. Everyone's always telling me who I was without bothering to learn who I am. That's deep, Riley. That's deep. Thanks, bird. Football knocked stuff around in there. But sometimes my brain still works. <laughs> Brains and brawn. Any interests beyond sports? I tried to branch out. But sports are just so fun, you know? Like, what's better than working up a sweat? Not that I sweat anymore. The bell rings. Next, girls, please. Oh, snap. Halftime. <laughs> no, 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 Riley. That's not halftime. That means you leave. Guess we call timeout. Let's keep this. Let's keep this going in the second half. Hmm. So I'm not sure about Riley. Let's see what other goals we deal with. Okay. So we've had emo, granny, murderer, and jock. Oh. <coughs> Hello, sunshine. Ah, uh, the Denise voice would be perfect for this guy. Like the smoker voice, but I know if I do that the entire time, I'm going to have no voice tomorrow. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give him like a different voice. The smoke rises up through their hollow frame, pumping out holes in their back. Um nice to meet you. It is. That's a surprise. I'm Vera. I'm Vera. I think his name's Vera. That or the lady in smoke. That's what the ghost hunters call me. Ghost hunters? Living weirdos. Trying to prove we exist. Hunter sounds dramatic. Gives him too much credit. For years now. I've hunted Vegas. The Glitzier. What does that word say? I don't know. On the strip. Obnoxious houses behind gates. I wake up. Rich fools at night. Shrouded in grey smoke. Why the rich? They've usually done something bad. Something no one knows. One look at me. Pulls it out of them. You should see. The looks they give me. You don't look so scary. I'm not in my costume. Oh, <laughs> with the black veil. And the smoke effects. Trust me, it works. So you're famous? I guess. We'll get around. I'm a regular topic. On Midnight Radio. <laughs> Vera sounds like a dope cosplayer, you know? 
Not that it matters. It ain't like I'm being famous. When you're alive. What was your life like? My life in Vegas? I was an executive assistant to this big shot casino owner. This was back in the boom. Everyone moved in post-war. By the early 50s, it was a wonderland. My boss was a real piece of work. Balding bag suits. Always eating peanuts. Tossing back rye. He was obsessed with money. Got it any way he could. And never let it go. No one liked him. But plenty feared him. It was my job. To keep his sins quiet. Anyway, that's me. What brings you to this thing? I was lonely. I hear ya. I'm about as lonely as a lost shoe. Just as useless too. You get used to it. Also, you never get used to it. You're not useless. Thanks, son. Sometimes I'm not sure. Anything I do matters. Got that feeling even in life. Can't seem to make it go away. All right, so Vera sounds interesting. Vera sounds interesting. Get us a bell. We'll have to pick this up later. See ya. Oh, hey. Hey, I'm Stephanie, but you can call me Steph. Everyone does. Hi, Stephanie. I actually prefer Steph. Stephanie sounds serious, but also somehow like a kid. Well, that's different from what we've seen so far. I just have introduced myself to a Steph. Oh gosh, I'm nervous. Are you nervous? Um, not really. Must be nice. I've been freaking out about this for, I swear, a whole week. I spent like an hour putting my face on this morning. You look nice. Thank you. That's sweet of you to say. What brings you to speed dating? I've been single for a while. At first it was great. I did what I wanted to do. Taught myself some Japanese. Played my clarinet every day without fail. Allowed myself time to get to know the real me. But after a while, the silence gets to you. My cat only says so much. Tell me about your cat. Clarence, after the angel. But he's more of a demon, especially around food. You know how most cats have this pleasant meow, almost a mew. Clarence <laughs> wails and whines, all raspy like he's dying or dead. Haha. Uh -huh. You probably think I'm so weird. We're all a little weird. I suppose it beats being normal. There's nothing worse than meeting someone and running out of things to say after like 10 minutes. That's why I'm here. There's no time to get bored. If you do, it's almost impressive. I hope the cat has the same face. <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, tell me about learning Japanese. I thought I'd pick it up really easily. Since it's so far removed from English. There's such an art to drawing the characters. But there's so many. First you learn hiragana. Those are the basic characters for sounds. Then katakana. The words taken from other languages. By the time I learned all those, I thought I was getting pretty good. Then came kanji. There are thousands of kanji characters. It's overwhelming. You have an eternity to learn. If only. What? Uh, what do you? But you do have an eternity to learn. I'll die before I learn the language. Um. Does she know she's dead? Does she not know she's a ghost? <laughs> um, you're already dead. Haha. <laughs> True. I mean, we all are in a sense, right? No, no, you are dead. <laughs> Waiting to die. <laughs> no, I mean, you're dead, Steph. Are you threatening me? Because that's super not cool. I'm going to tell Fran. She'll ban you. I, uh, you're a ghost. <laughs> Wait. 
What? What do you mean? Does she know she's not dead? <laughs> no, wait. The bell can't be ringing yet. I don't understand. We're dead? Did I die? Am I a ghost? She didn't know she was dead? Nobody told her? <laughs> the second round begins. I'm sorry, I can't go back to Riley after that. Sup? I'm Riley again. Haha. <laughs> so, like... What should we talk about now? Um... I have no idea. Oh. Well, if you have no idea, and I have no idea, this will be a weird few minutes. Hmm. Clicks tongue. <laughs> no way we're just gonna sit here in silence. Hum something. What's that you're humming? Just a little tune I wrote. I like to hear it. You sure? Because once you hear it, you won't get it out of your head. Sure. Nobody ever wants to hear my music. This is rad. Okay. So. It goes a little something like this. There's nothing I would like better than laying beside you forever in a graveyard cemetery row watching the green grass grow. <laughs> let him keep singing. Hold on. Let, it, let him cook. Let him cook. The sun would be down on the stones. No one would be on their phones. It would be the most perfect place. Almost as perfect as your face. Bars. 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 So, what did you think? It was great. It was great. You're too kind. Too kind. Guess I'm just lucky. Gifted with the, with the blessing of the beat, you know. So why music? <laughs> Sometimes I'll be exploring a graveyard and bam, inspiration kicks one through the uprights. Wait, what? K inspiration kicks one through the uprights. Okay. Do you do any art? Cool, cool. <laughs> it's good to be into things. Those things don't gonna... Those things don't gotta be art. <laughs> He's serenading you. Oh, sports. You do you, man. Be the best ghost you can be. That's good advice. I have my moments. Mm, you're smarter than you look. I am? Thank you so much. That's super nice of you. You're welcome, Riley. And you're nice and hot. <laughs> Score. No. Riley, no. No, 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 no. It was compliments. That doesn't mean I want to date you. So, like, I was thinking... It might be fun to see a game together. My old team's playing our state rivals. It's been a while since I've checked in on them. Uh, that's not really my thing. Bummer. But hey, I understand. I think maybe we can count this as a loss. There's always next time, though. Alright, so that was Riley. Oh, it's Vera. Hello again, Sunshine. Good to see you back around. <laughs> We've already talked a bit about how I lived. The Vegas life. My crooked casino boss. I like to tell you about it. How I died. I'm honestly curious. I'm speed dating. Might as well lay all my cards out, right? One day in 1954, the casino rang me up. A voice. The boss, San. Oh, the boss's son. Said they were out of clean shirts. It was maybe 6 a.m. The sun wasn't up yet. I dropped my girl off at a sitter and rushed over to the casino. You had a daughter? Sure did. I was a single mom in the 50s. In case you're doubting why I stayed at the job, the casino front doors were locked. The doors were never locked. Security let me in and led me to the blackjack tables. Where my boss was waiting. Dead on the floor. Blood. Soaking into the burgundy carpet. How did he die? 
A knife, probably. These guys hated guns. His son was there. He smiled when he saw me. You'll make this go away. He said. I nodded. Two guys, bigger than horses, stepped up behind me. They loaded my dead boss into the trunk of a black car. One of them drove. The other made sure to sit with me in the back seat. Did you know these men? No. All their toughs looked the same. I swear they worked a year. And then got put down. Like my boss had been put down. I kept thinking about where this puts me. When we got to the desert, would they bury me too? But they didn't. I watched as my boss friend to the mayor, a builder, a legend, got what he deserved. A hole in the sand. Did you confront the sun? Not a chance. By the time we got back to the strip, the casino was open. Busy as ever. And the sun was out. Making funeral arrangements. A heart attack. That's what they called it. Sudden, un unexpected, tragic horse crap. But how did you die? I went home alone. Locked all the doors and windows. Turned off all the lights. And waited. Nothing happened. Until I nodded off. I woke up to an intense heat. Took a deep breath. Sucking in hot black smoke. My lungs felt like they were burning. I couldn't see. They burned my home down. After making sure I was inside. I'm so sorry, Vera. Yeah, well, now you know why. I'm the lady in smoke. And you're damn cool for that. Sorry, this got so grim. After this is all over, maybe we can grab a drink. And try not to let the past haunt us. Even for just an hour. What about her daughter, though? Oh yeah, what about her daughter? So wait, we're actually totally 100% dead? Yeah. As in afterlife? The afterlife? Yes. So you're a ghost? And I'm a ghost? Yes! Oh boy, do I need a drink? I hear you. I was never really a big drinker. It's funny though. I sort of feel drunk now. Or, I don't know. Disassociated? Ooh, <laughs> fair enough. Like the world is going on without me. It's a familiar feeling. I felt it a lot when I was alive too. What was your life like? It was difficult. Except, not really. Mostly life was pretty good. Good parents? Good parents for sure. There was really only one thing wrong with them. They were cooler than me. When I was born, they were in their early 20s. They were into all this weird music. Artsy mo movies and... Oh, artsy movies about ballet school witches. And fantastic planets that were just creepy. My dad even smoked alternative cigarettes. Meanwhile, I was at dark with the puzzles. Learning languages for fun. My parents were excited when I joined a band. They thought it would help me make friends. Mostly I just like to practice alone in my room. Uh, didn't you get lonely? Everyone, every, oh, everyone asks lo loners that. <laughs> everyone asks loners that. Some people like to be alone. It's easier to keep a handle on things. Especially when things start to go wrong. And holy, did things go wrong in my life. A recurring theme with ghosts. I'm learning that. Everyone here has a sad story to tell. Mine? Well, this is hard to talk about. I had cancer. A brain tumor. It was bad. Diagnosed a week after my 19th birthday. I started getting headaches and feeling confused about things. Things would just look wrong. At a place. It's hard to describe. How long did they give you? 
They gave me a few months. With treatment, that turned into a year. They said it was aggressive. So they had to be aggressive. Eventually, the symptoms subsided. It seemed like they zapped it. Told me I was progression free. Whatever that means. I was allowed to go back to school. But I didn't. I retreated to my room. After so much time facing death, I had a lot of trouble facing people. Funny, huh? Now I'm facing death and people. Oh, it's so sad. Isabel, I guess it's back out into the world now. I have a lot to figure out. It was nice to meet you. Thanks for helping me talk this out. Steph leaves the room. If you hurried, you could catch up to her. See if she'd like to talk some more. Then again, a date with a ghost like Steph might not be the most exciting. She's not football. She's no football hunk, nor is she infamous lady in smoke. Hmm. Who do we go with? Who do we go with? Well, we're definitely not choosing Riley. So it's either Steph or Vera. I feel like we gotta go with it's Vera. Hmm. I feel like Vera is a right call as well. I want to learn more about that. What happened with Vera's daughter? You meet Vera outside. She's smoking in the dark. Took you long enough. Not really, though. I'm just kidding around. So, what do you do? Want to do? The world's our. Vera stops talking. She seems distracted all of a sudden. You hear that? I didn't hear anything. I heard a voice. There it is again. A voice. Did you hear it this time? I still didn't hear it. Hear it. I'm hearing a second voice. This one sounds familiar. Like the way I'd sound if someone recorded me. Me, but not me. Oh, it's a door. Uh, where are the voices coming from? The voices are... In my head. But also... Far away. The voice is... Calling out to me. It's saying... Vera, are you there? We are trying to reach Vera. Dead on the 5th. November 54. And then, the other voice. That one, that sounds so familiar. It says... Where are you, mom? Oh my god, it's a daughter! Oh no... My daughter. I, I'm sorry. I have to go. I have to find her. Can I come with you? Yeah. I think you'd be better. I'm not sure. What am I hearing? It sounds like my daughter, but... Well. You know what I've done. It might be nice. To have some backup. You follow Vera to the source of the voices in her head. A small bungalow on a quiet street on the other side of town. There's a square hedge around the front yard. And a neon sign in the window. Psychic readings. Psychic readings. Know the future. Know yourself. That was so loud, by the way. Let's go inside. <clears throat> inside is... The house is dark. I don't know why I'm still doing a voice. Except for the dim uh, room towards the back. Lit by trembling candles. Two people are seated at a table facing each other. One young woman dressed in black with multiple piercings. She appears to be psychic and playing the part of the witchy flair. A second woman sits across from her. This woman is in her 70s wearing uh, wireframe glasses and a long black dress. She looks like a retired librarian. That's my daughter. Is this a, se a seance? It sure looks that way. What happens now? I feel a presence. Vera's door opens her eyes. Mum, are you there? Your mother is here. She may not be able to speak, but she is listening. Mum? I sense two presences. Two? Yes. One is unknown to me. The psychic breathes in deeply. You may now ask your mother a question. 
perhaps she will respond, Mum? It's Jane. I... I need to know what happened. How you really died. The police. The papers. They all said it was an accident. But I found your letters. Mum. What did they do to you? I can't. I can't tell her what happened. It's too hard. Can you say something? I need her to know I'm out there. I'm just not sure if I can do it. Tell Jane how her mum really died. She has to know. The psychic repeats what you say word for word. The letters were all true. Every word. I'm sorry I left you. I did it so you could live. Jane begins to cry. You didn't leave me? They took you from me? I was only a little girl. I'm so sorry, mum. I miss you so much. I miss you too. It's so sad. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. I'm glad we went with uh, Vera, though. I'm really glad we went with Vera. Hi, Fran. Hello again. It's nice to see you. I feel like I'm actually going to cry. What the fuck? <laughs> that actually, like... Oh, God, that is so sad. Oh, it's a little shy guy. Ah! A ghost. Oh, God. Sorry. Of course, you're a ghost. We all are. I'm still not used to this whole being dead thing. I'm not used to it either. Nothing prepares you for this life, except this isn't life. Pulse life. I feel so lost. When I used to have anxiety attacks, I'd focus on my breathing. Listen to my heart beating. Now I can't breathe. I don't even have blood. What does that mean? I wish I knew. I think it's pretty neat. Take it one step at a time. Take it one step at a time. Steps? Yeah. That's a good one. It took me forever just to learn how to walk on solid ground. When I first woke up. After I died. I fell right through my coffin. Through my own body. Down, down, down. Into the bedrock. It was so dark. What did you do? I seized up. That stopped me from falling. It was like my whole body became corporal. Bedrock Minecraft gamer. <laughs> yo, yo, he dug down to bedrock. Not flesh. Just like, you know, if you concentrate, you can pick up objects like that. Except I was the object and the earth was holding me. It was so quiet there. Stuck in solid rock. Little bro fell in the lava rip. <laughs> mm, how long were you down there? It's hard to say. I didn't know much at that point. I didn't even know I died. Let alone what ha was happening. Well, I was. Ah! <laughs> oh, he's so nervous. Oh, that was just a bell. Phew. Thank you for listening. I guess we'll talk more in a bit. Hopefully the other ghosts are as nice as you. Of course. They're, of course. They'll be as nice, hopefully. Another ghost appears. Oh, <laughs> he's cool. Well, look what we have here. The ghost's voice creaks like ancient wood. My name's Spooky Peter. He tips his hat. Oh, he's so cool. Dust spills off the bram. How do you do? Oh, should I give him like McCree's voice? Like, how do you do? No, that's that's not McCree's voice. Um, I do okay. I'd wager otherwise. Like, maybe you're scared. Like, maybe you've seen a ghost. Spooky Peter laughs. Or coughs. It's hard to tell. <laughs> You definitely are spooky. <laughs> Thank you for saying so. I've been doing this for a while. My record of hauntings goes back long as the door. Since the Black Death took me in 65. Oh, this guy is old. 
This guy died a long, long time ago. 1665. I thought the plague was earlier. You've seen a lot then. History happened. Wars. Revolutions. Mostly I read about these things. Mostly I keep to my own. Spooking and scaring. Got him pretty good at it. Even been in books. Not always my name, mind you. But you can tell when it's me. The top hat. The fear. All hot and sick. Nobody speaks as uh, spooks him like Spooky Peter. Are you the devil? I try my best. Plague doctor. Oh, he could be. He could be a plague doctor. Do you... Guess I see it? The potential, I mean. I can help with that. Teach me your spooky ways. Now, now. Spooky Peter doesn't just teach anybody. A rock has potential. Before you throw it through a window. What makes you any better? I turn milk into worms. I make unplugged stereos blast music. I can pull my face off. Spooking like that may shock him. But there ain't no art to it. You go all the way. The living have nothing more to fear. And when they aren't spooked, what's the point? No. The spookiest spookings, the stuff that eats at you, <laughs> makes you doubt what you hear or see. Makes you wonder what could be under that bed. It's never as spooky when you see it what it is. Oh, uh, when you see what it is. So, how's that for a lesson? Hmm, useful, useful. I guess, I guess it is scarier when it's the unknown. There's more where that came from. If a legendary spookin' is what you're after, and Spooky Peter's gonna take you under his wing, so to speak, you'll need a solid foundation. It's all about knowing your audience. Your, your, your audience. <laughs> a good spookin' is in the details. Oh no, no, the bell rang. I like Spooky Peter. The bell. It means we move on. Guess I'll be seeing you when I come back around. A thick layer of dust now covers the table. Oh, don't say it's another smoker. I can't do that voice again. Another ghost appears. Oh! <laughs> Wanna make some money? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Maybe. What? Maybe? It's a yes or no. How, though? Not so fast. Let me feel this out first. You could be a knock. I'm not a knock. That's exactly what knocks say. I'm just fooling. No knock would dress like that. Dress like how? Like you're dressed. How am I dressed? Anyway, you're alright. Office stands. Money to be made. Do ghosts even need money? <laughs> Technically, no. We don't buy things. But money buys something else now. Favors with the breathers. <laughs> with the breathers! Is that what he calls people that are alive? <laughs> Favors with the breathers. <laughs> with the people that breathe the oxygen. Influence. Information. The living always wants the money. The living buy plenty. The name's Leon, by the way. Leon Kennedy? I rob banks, don't judge. Nice to meet you, Leon. Don't be making this personal. We rob a bank together, that's it. <laughs> no more contact. <laughs> At least not for a couple months. Uh, how do we do this? We're ghosts, aren't we? The problem with robbing banks, people see the robbers. But you can't see a ghosty. We can walk right in and float that money right on out. Genius, right? It's the perfect crime. <laughs> I can't believe I'm humoring you. You'll know it'll be a good time. It will be a good time, though. We might get money out of it. And what are the consequences? Are the cops gonna arrest a ghost? No. 
No, they are not. He's a loan shark? Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, he's a loan shark. It makes so much sense. There's no harm in hearing you out. I'm still not convinced. There's no harm in hearing you out. No harm at all. At the very least, it'll break up all the gloom in this room. Leon looks around at the other ghosts. Yeesh. Hey, the ghosts in this room haven't been that bad. Nuts. Time to switch seats. Don't worry. I'll be back. We got more to talk about. Uh, I like all of them. I like all of them this time. The other ghosts. Holy, were they awful. Leon's just a creep. And Spooky Peter. My name is earned. Oh, that name is earned. Oof. Also, I think I forgot to introduce myself. You did, actually. My name's Kayo. Sorry. No need to be sorry. No need. Sure. I'm still sorry, though. My anxiety gets the best of me. And social situations are tough. This one had specially... Leon's a piece of work. Spooky Peter has been around. Mm, Leon's a piece of work. I'll say. He's actually asked me to rub a back. Can you believe that? When I told Fran? You told Fran? <laughs> I feel like I had to. Oh, gosh. Does this make me a snitch? Do you think Leon will find out? Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. Maybe you... It's probably for the best. Maybe you shouldn't have. Right. Who comes to speed dating? Looking for bank robbers? Actually, that's kind of genius. <laughs> Going on a speed dating, looking for people to rob a bank with you is kind of genius. Leon's got some guts. Or whatever the ghost equivalent is. Your speed dates are going well, then. At best, dating ghosts is just frustrating. Everyone asks the same things. How did you die? What was your life like? If we were alive, the questions would be like, What kind of food do you like? What's your favorite movie? Dying doesn't make people more interesting. Yo, he's gotta get a point, though. It's Videodrome, by the way. My favorite movie, I mean. Long live the new flesh. Ha! <laughs> he smiled! He smiled! <laughs> you know it! Sometimes I feel like a VCR. Obsolete. Out of date. No new stories to sell. We can find some new stories. Maybe. Oh, we can just rewatch old ones. You miss things the first time. So, do you want to hear how I died? If you want to talk about it. Might as well get it out of the way. I was in film studies, working my way towards a PhD. In debt, always pretty sad. I had good friends though. I was always studying. One weekend, they convinced me not to study. They said we should go to the lake instead. I couldn't swim, I never learned. You see where this is going? So you jumped in, you jumped in anyway? I drowned. <laughs> That's so stupid though. <laughs> if you didn't know how to swim, why would you try and swim? <laughs> Everything went black and quiet. I woke up dead in a fancy wooden box under six feet of dirt. That's when I fell deeper. Like I told you before, I hate thinking about it. Why do I always dwell on the bad stuff? What's your favorite food? Seriously? You're asking me my favorite food? Coffee is a food, right? It's coffee. We could go after coffee after that. We could go for coffee after this. At a coffee shop? No thanks. We can't drink coffee anymore. And I hate being around the living. They somehow make me even sadder. We could... Go to carnivals in the town? You're joking, right? Crowds of people? Giant stuffed garbage animals? Collapsible rides put together overnight? Yeah, no. Tell you what, I'll come up with something. Something a little different, hopefully. That sounds good. 
Yay! <laughs> Yay! I can't wait to do something with you. That isn't talking about myself. Sorry. He's sweet. He's sweet, but uh, I don't know at the moment. I kind of want to go and rob a bank with Leon. <laughs> See you after we're done. And then we're back to Spooky Peter. I have done the rounds. I had a look at the crop. Only you have what is required. The stuff. Now I will ask what needs asking. What spook Spooky Peter? <laughs> Not much. Though I will say, I ain't so fond of beasts. Beasts? What kind of beasts? The domestic case. <laughs> Hounds. Felines. You're scared of dogs? Spooky folk like me rely on a certain covertness. I can't just be all clanging about announcing myself. That's not so spooky. Dogs, they can smell spooky Peter. <laughs> they know I'm here. I'll shrink up into a corner in the dark. And sure enough, they'll find me. Start growling. Bark to sound the alarms. It's trouble, let me tell you. A real impediment. Spooky Peter wheezes. Something rattling around in there. Are you okay? Pay the rattle, no mind. I died with it. It stays with me. You ever been to the mirror world? What's that? The place beyond this, but the same as this. You've seen it, but always looking in. If you fancy another lesson, come on by that edge of things. I'll show you around the other side. I'd like that. Maybe you think you'll like it. Seeing is, seeing it's another thing entirely. Some things, some things spook even Spooky Peter. <laughs> spooky Peter is such a mood. And now we go back to the bank robber, Leon. Okay, so. Here's what I'm thinking. You'll come with me. While I get a third ghost to watch the door. Do you know which bank yet? Absolutely. A secluded branch up on the fourth. Board tellers. Lots of other customers. It's a great place to hit. How do we get inside? How did you find it? What do you mean, how do you find a bank? How do we get inside? Oh, but then asking how do we get inside is also kind of a dumb question, isn't it? How did you find it? A friend put me on it. He's trustworthy, don't worry. Leon pulls out some graphing paper. I drew the layout in pencil. I probably didn't need so much detail. Since we're going in from the front door. I just figured it's best to be prepared. Wait. Does this mean you're interested? No promises yet. Tell me more about you first. No promises yet. Hey, it's something. So after we get in the bank. Oh man, think fast. We've got company. Leon frantically puts the graphing paper away. So then I say to the priest. What are you two talking about over here? <laughs> Friends getting on tours. Oh, hey, Fran. How's it hanging? We've had complaints, Leon, about my cologne. <laughs> you know what about. I promise I don't. I'm just looking for love. Just like all the other ghosts. Just like my friend here. Hmm. Fran stares at Leon. Like she'll see the truth in his eyes. Fine. But I'm watching you. Both of you. That was a close one. Thanks for not ratting me out. I didn't get a chance, no problem. I got a good feeling about this. We're gonna be rich. I need to know who I'm working with. Alright, fine. I'll give you my life story. A bridged version. It'd probably help maintain over uh, our cover anyway. Fran walks by. Fran walks by, it seems like she's eavesdropping. 
The trouble with me is, it's hard not to talk about stealing. I stole candy when I was nine, switched to stealing beer at 14, stole my first car a year later. I hit up convenience stores, drive-ins, even held up a, a laundromat once. I threw my back out, carrying all those squatters, uh, quarters. <laughs> thought he said, thought he said squatters, and I was like, what? Did you ever get caught? Big or small, every heist has a hitch. Three or four went so bad, I was in, I, I was in and out of jail, but it wasn't anything serious. Until I got a crew together and started doing banks. Even country cops took that seriously. Caught me good after five. I spend the rest of my life behind bars. So you have unfinished business? Nothing so dramatic. Stealing's just all I know. It's a hobby. A talent. The love of my life. <laughs> and yet you came to speed dating. That's our time. You've heard my pitch. Gotten to know me a little more than I like. So what do you say? Uh, what do we do, guys? What do we do? What do we do? Do we, do we, do we go with Leon? Or do we go with Spooky Peter? Or do we go with Kyle? I feel like Leon and uh, Spooky Peter definitely have the most, like, interesting ones. And I, 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 I would be interested to see how it is robbing a bank as a ghost. <laughs> So I might go with Leon, but saying that, I kind of want to explore Spooky Peter's uh, alternate dimension. I'm going to turn him down for now. Fair enough. You know the plan. You know me. If you change your mind, I'll be at this branch at this time. Leon slips you a note of paper. It's been a slice. Who do I go with? I don't know. Choose your date. I like Kayo, but Kayo kind of seems like the date will be a bit on the more boring side. I'm going to go Spooky Peter. I just need to know. You arrive for your date with Spooky Peter. A hall of mirrors at a roadside carnival. A clown's face. All smiles and menace watches over the entrance. Welcome to my home. Inside are twisted corridors lined with mirrors. With only a slight reflection, it's especially disorientating to navigate these halls. Spooky Peter leads you to a specific mirror, taller than the others. The mirror's face is concave, as if to pull you in and everything around it. Oh, as if to pull everything around it, I guess. We are going into this mirror. Follow him. Together you step inside the mirror. Welcome to the mirror world. Or as it's known here. What does that say? Delaro. I don't want me. Ick. That is the mirror world spelled backwards. Oh! Ah. Uh, do you see the eerie green? That is what happens when an image reflects itself. It takes on a an eerie green. The more times a reflection is reflected, the greener it becomes. Just like this. That is pretty green. <laughs> Thank you. Do not be afraid. Nothing here can hurt you. In the mirror world. The physical laws are appended. Am I really here? Or am I over here? Or am I over here? Perhaps it is all of the above. Or even nowhere at all. Hehehe. <laughs> Now, this is getting trippy. K? I could just put K? That's amazing. I thought you might be impressed. I have practiced these skills for ages. Centuries. It is not easy being green. Now, come with me. The Spookenhauer has approached. Oh, uh, approaches. The That's 3 a.m. in case you're wondering. 
Where are we going? We are headed to a brownstone. A walk-up I know quite well. The second floor apartment in a house going on a hundred years. A student of the arts named Paul has moved in. He heard the rumors. The house is haunted, they said. He ignored them. The cost was worth the fear. Together, you and Spooky Peter fly through the void, passing countless mirrors in reverse, each peering into a life still being lived. Each mirror in the living world is actually a door, staring into one long enough in the dark, or saying a spirit's name three times. That's like knocking. After a short trip through oblivion, you arrive at a particularly decorative mirror. A splendid hunt. Oh, hunt, sorry. Spooky Peter leads you through the mirror glass into a long hall lined with br uh, bricks on one side. There are still boxes in the hall. The mirror you stepped through is propped up against the wall. At the far end is a massive kitchen with original marble tile that does well to hide its age. Paul is sleeping. Let's get to spooking. Spooky Peter leads you through the closed bedroom door where a man in his 20s is sound asleep on a mattress. He is snoring loudly. Spooky Peter floats to the one shadowy cornered O'Connor by the open window, then motions for you to do the same. The curtain flaps all over Peter's shadowy visage. He stands silently, hat bent slightly forward. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> He's just standing there. Should we flicker the lights? The aim is to be a presence, not a nuisance. Spooky Peter stands motionless for several minutes. Wait, no. 40 minutes. 40 minutes of doing nothing but standing there. Finally, he moves away from the corner. Spooky Peter sinks into the hardwood floor. The old wood lets out a loud creak, creak, creak. As steady as a pulse. Paul is still snoring. Peter moves into the ceiling and starts to scratch, scratch, scritch, scritch. Like a raspy breath. Paul is still snoring. <laughs> Peter is starting to look annoyed. He floats over Paul and peeks into his ear. Some sort of uh, orange foam. It obstructs his ear canal, preventing him from hearing us. Again, I am thwarted by the progress of man. This is pointless. This is plenty. If you spook them right, they won't even know it. They'll just feel it vaguely. Make them look behind them. Run up the basement stairs. Anything more would be vulgar. Anything more would be irresponsible. You still have much to learn. On another day, perhaps. Spooky Peter leads you back into the hallway mirror. Back through this weird mirror world of his. A, f a fractal realm on the dull side of the train. What are he doing in basement? It's dangerous down there. <laughs> What he said. Eventually, you reach the mirror that leads back to where you came in. I wish I chose Leon, man. I feel like this is so boring. I thought we were going to spook some people. And instead, we just watched the man sleep. Well, this is me. Thank you for your company. This was weird. Thank you. That means a lot to me. No, no, no. That wasn't a compliment. Before we return to the physical world, I should warn you. Time behaves differently in the mirror world. What may have felt like a few hours was in fact years. A decade has passed since we began this day. W excuse me? I mean, I suppose it doesn't matter with time, does it? Oh, at least when you're a ghost. I speak in jest. It's barely been the length of a talkie. The look of fear on your face. Oh, it's not been a decade. <laughs> Spooky Peter. Spooked you good. He tips his hat to say goodbye. More dust falls off the brim. Guess I'll be seeing ya. A breeze picks up and the rest of him blows away. Sorry about this one. 